Hey everyone, Ed DeBoo, physical therapist out of Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. So I'll be 53 this year and core strength and hip strength is critical. In this video, we're gonna talk about two closed chain ways that we're gonna work on strengthening our hip. Why is hip strengthening so important? It's for balance, especially if you get 60 and older. It's for power, the ability to move quickly. It's to protect the knee because hip weakness oftentimes creates additional stress on the knee and the ankle in the forms of a valgus stress at the knee, which kind of puts pressure on the inside of the knee, as well as a pronation of the foot. Quick definition first, closed chain exercise is one where your foot is in contact with the ground. An open chain exercise for the hip might be something like a clamshell where you're laying on your side and you're lifting up your leg. Open chain exercises are okay, but closed chain exercises, I feel, give us more bang for our buck. So if you're able to tolerate closed chain exercises for your hip, add one or both of these into the mix and see how you do. All right, let's get started. You wanna make sure that your program, especially as we get older, has a strong component of hip strengthening exercises. We talked about how open chain exercises are the kind where you might do some leg lifts or some clamshells, and those are fine, especially if you can't do weight bearing exercises. But in my opinion, if you can do weight bearing exercises, you wanna get on your feet as soon as you can. This first exercise is gonna work a little bit more on this glute medius, and it's a pretty simple exercise. It's not a huge range of motion, but yet it's an effective exercise. So what you'll do is you're gonna stand first on your left leg, and then I'm just gonna to toe touch my right leg. Weight bear on my left, toe touch with my right. And then what I'm gonna do is, this right hip is gonna drop just a little bit, and I'm gonna hike it up. I'm gonna drop it, and I'm gonna hike it up. And what I'm actually doing is, is working on my left gluteus medius muscle. Doesn't seem like much, but it's a good exercise to do, especially to kind of wake up that glute medius. Let your right hip drop, and then squeeze that left glute. Let it drop, and come on back up again. As it starts to get easy, imagine having a little bit of weight in this hand and come up and back down again and come up and back down. As your balance and strength improve, lift up that right leg. So now what we're doing is we're working on balance as well as strength. I'm letting that right hip drop and I'm coming back up into a hike. Drop up into a hike. Drop up into a hike. Of course, you would do this on both sides. How many would I do? It depends upon the level of rehab you're at and the level of strength that you have as well too. But ideally, you wanna work on this for maybe three sets, anywhere from that 12 to 20 repetitions, just until you feel that glute medius activating. Now, you're not gonna get a big burn out of the muscle. What we're trying to do here is this is more of a motor learning type of exercise. It's almost like we're trying to wake up that muscle again after it's been dormant for whatever reason. It could be surgery, it could have been a hip injury. It doesn't matter. There's a lot of things that can kind of give us what we call a motor sensory amnesia where the muscle kind of forgets how it's supposed to act. The second exercise is a little bit harder and it's geared a little bit more towards the glute max. So the glute medius was a little bit out to the side. The glute max is the one that we're most familiar with and that is our basically our derriere muscle. So I'll show it to you from both positions. The most important thing on this one here is this initial hip hinge. So I have most of my weight on my left leg. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna hinge at the hip, okay? And I'm gonna bring my weight back until I feel the weight entirely across my foot. My back is nice and straight, and I feel my glute activated. If I don't stick my butt out far enough, and if I'm not bent forward enough, I'm gonna mainly feel this in the front along my quad. I wanna feel it in my glute. So you really have to bend forward. Think about a speed skater and how low they get. Now once I'm here, I adjust my weight until I feel the weight back here on my heel and my glute activated. Once my glute is activated here on the left side, I'm gonna toe touch, nice and slow. And as I do this, you're gonna get a nice burn in this left hip. If you're feeling it more in your knee or your quad, that means you're not bent over far enough. So once again, reposition yourself Hip hinge, back is flat, drive your hips out. You're gonna feel like you're falling back. Adjust the weight on this support leg until you feel that glute activated. Feel that glute activated, squeeze the entire leg, and then we're toe tapping. 
you can have some variations in the toe tapping. So I'm hip hinge, weight on my left leg, balancing over that foot until I feel my glute activated and I can toe touch in front, side, back. And what you wanna do with this one is, I recommend doing a timed version. So like three 30 second intervals and you'll really feel that glute muscle working. As you do your glute exercises, as with any exercise, if you notice that one side is a little bit weaker than the other, make sure you give that side a little bit more work so eventually they kind of equal out in strength. Those are a couple easy, basic, but effective exercises that you can add into your hip strengthening mix. If you have any questions, leave it down below. Also, if you want to go next level with your aging, and if you're over 50 like Elizabeth and I, please check out livewell50.com. It's a membership site dedicated entirely to all of us over 50. All right, thanks very much for watching. Take care.